Hey guys, John here from Nothing But Cardboard. People have asked us a little bit about how we store our cards and what we do with the cards when we get them in. So I'm just gonna do a quick little video here to show you what we do, so stay tuned. All right guys, I'll make this as quick as possible. This is what we do when we get cards in. Open them up, look at them, check them out. I like to reuse my envelopes if I can and if they're in good shape. So I will go through those. Raw cards, I'll check them best I can based on the time I have to see how they look. Make sure that they're decent. This can be a whole different little issue in Rabbit Trail. I don't want to go down that trail, but Leaving feedback on raw cards depends on how they list it. If there's something seriously wrong with it that wasn't there, you can always reach out to them and see how they want to handle it. I've gotten refunds and return raw cards. I've gotten discount for raw cards. Some of them are listed as they were, they had good pictures, and I just had to accept the cards the way they were. So you just have to be smart. If, if a guy's taking pictures of cards and they're inside plastic or penny sleeves, it's hard to see. That can be an issue. Guys take great pictures. They show the corners. They say the card's near mint. Again, you have to use your wisdom. Near mint condition, when they put that on there, they'll say near mint or mint condition. That's a PSA 7 or an 8. So, so figure it's an 8. If they say mint, 9. Mint plus could be a 9 or... If they say card is in great shape, you just have to be smart. So I'll evaluate the card, look at it. If there's any issues, I'll reach out to the person on eBay, see what they wanna do, how they wanna handle it. I'll go on eBay, leave feedback, get that part taken care of right away. And then I will go into my documents and put in the card that I received it how much I paid for it and get that in there for tax purposes and just so you know how much money you're gonna make on the card. So I will do that for all the cards. If you're gonna sell the cards and you have time, go ahead and put your cards on eBay and get them listed and do that. A lot of times you get cards in, you get multiple packs or sometimes where the mailbox is so full I can't get anything in there. So several ways that we do it, I have a container this is a box just for raw cards. They fit in there nice, they can't get damaged. Cards that I want to grade, but I don't have time. Maybe it's not the season. Maybe I'm trying to get, you know, multiples of the same one, whatever the issue is. They'll go in here to be graded on the box. Once I grade the cards and I'm waiting for PSA to open or for me to get enough cards together to send off, I color code them. We did a couple videos on pre-grading your cards and grading them and what we do with them. But I don't want to look at them again once I've pre-graded them. So I go ahead and put these sticky notes on there which tells me how I graded it already based on the pre-grade that it got. Then we, I bought some of these bins that I purchased. Actually, my wife shops at Target all the time so she picked these up for me. Target, it's like two or three bucks. Cards fit in there nicely. And we have a couple of these bins also that the cards will fit in nicely. I have multiple of these. So these are marked football, QBs. I got basketball and I have several different ones. We have an area where we put the cards when we get them in that we're just gonna hold on to to decide what we wanna do. Once they're listed on eBay, we have the same boxes in the closet that they're listed on eBay and they're broken down in different, different sports. We only have about 100 cards now, maybe not even that many on our eBay, so it's not that difficult, but there's been times when we've had a ton of cards to love football, basketball. Depending on how many cards you're listing, you may have to break it down, you know, 2000, 2010 baseball. However you do it, based on the number of cards you're listing, you just wanna keep track it's not a good idea to have cards you have on eBay mixed in with your cards to sell. You go to a card show and you want to do some trading, all of a sudden it sold and you don't realize it, you don't take it off of eBay. So we try to keep those cards separate. 
if you purchase cards of one person or multiples, I used to have a bin for Kobe Bryant and Derek Jeter. I've really locked in them quite a bit. Right now I have a LeBron James bin that I'm storing cards in. I'm getting that many cards and I just want to keep them, keep them in order. So this is how we store them. It keeps them out of the way, keeps them organized, and it keeps them so that we know where they're at if they sell or if we need to do something with them. All that we'll do is go in there football season. We just I just went in and pulled out the football QBs and listed a bunch of those on eBay because now's the time to sell them. So that's what we do. It's, it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. It's nice to have different boxes that you can put them in so they're not sliding all over the place. And I found these at Target and they seem to, to work pretty well. So if you guys have any other additional tips, leave them down below in the comments. And again, we appreciate you guys. Hope you'll subscribe, like this uh, video and have a good day, guys.